If you're an attorney in the pursuit of a successful law practice, fulfilling career, and the life of your dreams, this podcast has it all. Behind the Bench gives you great tools to overcome the unique challenges you face every day as a law firm owner. Welcome to Behind the Bench Podcast with your host, Josh Konisberg, author, partner, and co-founder of Law Firm Marketing Pros and Lifelong Entrepreneur. Hey, Josh Konigsberg, Law Firm Marketing Pros, back here with another exciting episode of Behind the Bench Podcast. Super excited about today's episode. Uh, my guest today is Josh Nelson. And just a quick little introductory and background on Josh. Josh is a partner and co-founder of Plumber SEO, a multi-seven-figure agency specializing in the plumbing space. He is the founder of Seven Figure Agency. He's a public speaker and author of four books. Those books include The Seven Figure Agency Roadmap, Client Retention Handbook for Digital Marketing Agencies, Internet Marketing and SEO for Contractors, and Internet Marketing for Plumbing and HVAC Contractors, all available on Amazon. Josh, welcome to the show. Thanks for joining us. And let's uh, dive in. Tell us uh, any, anything you'd like to add about your background before I, I jump in with some questions. I think that was an awesome introduction. I really appreciate it. I'm excited to be here, excited to to share. And so let's dive right into it. Great. So tell us a little bit about your background. What inspired you to pursue a career in digital marketing and start Plumber SEO? Yeah. So I, I had a passion for internet marketing early on. Um, you know, I, I really felt like web and SEO and all of these things were the were the future. And I, I really enjoyed the idea of marketing and lead generation. Um, and so I started my first agency right out of right out of high school. I was going to college, kind of stubbed my toe a little bit, didn't really have the right model. Uh, but early in in 2011, started Click Incorporated, which became Plumbing and HVAC SEO, um, and really just wanted to help business owners grow. And and started to see a real opportunity within the plumbing and HVAC space to, space to bring best in class marketing strategies. Uh, and you know, the rest is history from there. Already grew to a Multiple seven figure agency made the Inc. 5000 list of fastest growing companies uh, four years in a row. Uh, and we're now honored to serve hundreds of the best plumbing and HVAC contractors from across the country. That's tremendous. You should be so proud. You must be so proud of yourself. Thank you. And, and your team. You have a tremendous team there. So, so uh, tell us about your transition and the inspiration to seven figure agency. Yeah. So, as I grew my agency, I was always a student of the game. Um, you know, reading all of the best books on internet marketing and being at the big conferences and the big shows and events. Um, and, you know, like I said, our first agency failed. And so when our second agency had this hockey stick, actually, when we made it to seven figures and multiple seven figures, we had a lot of other agencies that weren't thriving coming up and saying, like, what are you doing different? Like, how did you get your agency to grow? Um, and and since I enjoyed the topic so much, I decided, why don't I create seven figure agency and show other agencies our model and what worked for us? Um, and it's been a real passion project for me. It's something I've really enjoyed uh, developing over the years. So when did you actually start Seven Figure Agency and what was the vision and how has it progressed? Yeah, so it uh, started in 2013, kind of two years into our plumbing and HVAC SEO agency once we made the seven figure level. Um, initially, my, my vision was let me just let me help some people not go through the struggles that I did uh, and quickly you know evolved into Let's let's put a really crazy, big, hairy, audacious goal into the future and say, our vision is to help 100 agencies get to seven figures. And I was, at the time, it was like, man, that'll be a hundred million dollar impact. And think about how many lives that will touch. Um, and you know, you asked about kind of how we're progressing. Well, this last year, 2023, we celebrated accomplishing that goal, uh, crossing 100 agencies at seven figures and multiple seven figures. Um, we've expanded the vision now to we want 500 agencies at seven figures. And, um, it was just, it's, it's exciting to see that, that kind of play out and become a reality in the real world. And so how many member agencies do you have now? And if you can just give our audience some statistics on like the overall impact, because the last numbers I heard were just absolutely amazing. Yeah. So now we have 300 members in the program. That's member agencies. Um, we have 107 that are doing over seven figures. We've got 29 doing multiple seven figures, cumulatively the organization. If you kind of add all of the members up, we do over $250 million in annualized revenue. 
So the impact is huge. And that's just the revenue from the agencies. What I'm really excited about is the ripple effect of that, which is all of those agencies like yourself, you know, you've got team members, you've got management, and they're like living great lives and they're growing their career skills. Uh, and then if you take that to the next level, really the amount of clients that all of these agencies serve and the impact that they're having on those clients in terms of their ability to make more money and, and grow their team and ha you know, really have a bigger impact in their own businesses. And I really think it's a, it's a billion dollar plus impact and it's just a, it's an exciting thing to be a part of. Absolutely amazing. And I, just from knowing you, it's 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 got to feel so good to to achieve that, and and you're really not even there where yet. I mean, I know you've ex exceeded your goal, but now it's 500, and what's that going to look like in a couple right. of years? And and I know you're going to do it, so so it's just tremendous. So, um, so uh, so what have you done? Like, what's made the journey so successful to become the top or one of the top? And I think you're probably the top digital marketing coach in the industry. Well, I think you know, just like just like we did in our own agencies, we're we're big students of the game. So we're at the conferences, reading the, the books, attending the you know the the seminars to learn how do we become best in class, how do we serve our agency clients at the highest level possible, and make sure they're crushing it in their businesses. Uh, I think also really one of the biggest things is that we actually run an agency and we're consistently really like in our own business figuring out what works, what doesn't work. Um, applying that back. So we're not doing guesswork. We are actually living it and then teaching it. Uh, but I think the biggest thing is is the community, the amazing coaches and mentors that we've been able to get along on this vision with us. Guys like yourself that show up and train the other members that really believe in this idea that you learn something and then you do it. And then mastery comes by teaching it and really internalizing that 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 learning. Um, and so the, the true secret to the success of Seven Figure Agency is you know, guys like yourself that are willing to share and give back uh, as much as you get. Well, thank you. And, and again, it's my pleasure to serve. And and what you said that's so compelling to me is is how to get to mastery, those steps. First you do it and then 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 you begin to teach it and that be then you master it. And it, it's I, it's so true because my skills have absolutely improved. Then the other coaches are just so true and, and mentors are just so tremendous. And each one brings a unique ability and skills that that add to the uh, community. So, so switching topics quickly, it's just trends and, and developments. What are some of the trends you're seeing the more successful digital marketing agencies do or implement? Yeah, so I, I think there, there's, a, there's a lot of trends, and, and you know this is something that's constantly changing. I think at the, at the forefront is agencies willing to be industry specific rather than generalists. You know, or agencies like yourself that say, hey, look. Rather than trying to be in, you know, a marketing firm that serves everybody, we're going to specialize in law firms, right? And we're going to be the best of the best in that particular space. I think the other trend that's that's really picking up is rather than just being a single channel provider, while well, we just do SEO or we just do pay per click or we just do social media, recognizing that true success as an agency is about helping your clients grow. It's about making it rain for your clients. Um, and so I think a big trend is agencies going from single channel to to multi channel and bringing a comprehensive solution that actually moves the needle, generates more cases, generates more revenue. Um, and I, I think also kind of a shift from just generating rankings or just generating leads to really thinking about how do we generate revenue? How do we make sure that we're doing all of the right things? And we're we're really trying to take it as close to a new uh, a new case or a new client as possible uh, and, and and really shifting the gears from just lead generation or just SEO to to really making the cash register ring, so to speak. So so well stated and, and so true because I see it as some of the new agencies that join Seven Figure Agency come in and what they're doing and how they need to be coached up. So so well said. But I'd like to dive into really what I, I'm, I'm considering the topic of today's episode and that is how to, how to choose a digital marketing agency for a law firm. Yeah. And, and so the first question I have is, what should attorneys look for when hiring a digital marketing agency? And what are the signs of a good digital marketing agency? Such a great topic. And I'm really glad we're going deep on this because I think it needs to be unpacked. And I think that the, the better the industry, like the actual end clients understand what to look for and questions to ask, the better, the better chances are they're going to wind up with a great agency that's going to align with their goals. Uh, so in my mind, I think, first of all, you want someone that understands your industry, somebody that specializes in your space. 
So, and if you're talking about law firms specifically, you want to deal not with, you know, anybody and everybody, but somebody that specializes in legal, like law firm marketing pros. Um, I think number two is you want somebody that not only says, hey, I specialize in working with law firms, but has proven results that they can say, hey, this is our client. This is the results we're getting for them. And and can back it up, not just with the data, but also references, right? And let, let's face it, like we, <laughs> we want to talk to the real people and make sure these are legitimate case studies and not just somebody talking out, out, out of the side of their mouth. Um, number three is I think you want to make sure you find an agency that has a, a plan, right? They're not winging it. They're not like, okay, you told me you want this and we're going to do that. But they know how to reverse engineer the outcomes that you're after, right? If you've got a specific revenue goal, they know how to craft the plan that looks at projections, that looks at the website, the SEO, the pay-per-click, the social media, the local service ads, and can craft the plan with true projections, right? Where they say, look, look, this is what we're going to do. This is how long it's going to take. This is what you can expect in terms of the amount of cases, the amount of leads, and the actual revenue that you generate. Uh, I'm sure we could go much deeper, but I think that if you find someone that specializes in your industry, that has proven results, and that has a plan that they're backing up with projections, you're going to be in pretty good shape. So the, the next question really is the opposite of that. And so, and, and maybe it's as simple as, well, what, well, let me ask the question. What, what red flags should an attorney look out for when evaluating a potential digital marketing agency to work with? Yeah, I think the first thing is a uh, big red flag is they're slow to come off the blocks, right? I think that if you're working with a world-class organization that is a specialist in your industry, they're going to have a really thought out onboarding process where they're getting the usernames, the passwords, and they've got a, 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 a mapped out strategy to start to generate quick wins for you. I think if that's not happening, that's a big time red flag. Uh, I think, Kyle, like you said, the inverse to what we said, what you want to look for is if they don't have a plan, right? A lot of times these agencies will say, hey, yeah, we, we specialize in your space. Don't worry about the plan. Just give us the retainer fee and we'll make it rain. We'll figure right. it out. I think right. the days of just blindly trusting your agency are gone, right? They should have a plan that says, look, this is what we're going to do over the next 12 months. This is how it's going to break down. These are the results that you can expect. Um, and they've got a plan that you can look at and understand and really hold them accountable to. Um, I, if they don't have that, I think that's a really big red flag. I think the other red flag would be if if you're asking questions and it just doesn't seem like they have the answers. They, they need to talk to somebody else or you know, it's taken a long time to get back to you. That's an indication that they might not actually be even doing the work for you. They might just be passing this off as a third-party provider. Um, and I think those are all red flags you want to pay really close attention to as you think about your agency provider and the strategic relationships that you form. So, so well said. So what what is your opinion? And this is a diff, probably it might be a difficult question for you to answer. Some agencies use what's known as white label services where they don't do the work in-house. They'll subcontract out to someone to do their SEO or their PPC. So can you speak a little bit to the difference between the two? Some of the, so whereas there's full control in-house versus the other. I mean, I think that, you know, I don't have any issue with agencies that do white label, that white label things out. I think there's a place for that. I think as the client and you're looking at who I should hire, who I should align with, who I should partner with, um, I think you definitely want a, an agency that's got an internal team because no one is going to be able to provide the laser attention and focus to your results than an agency that actually has a team. And if they're using a white label provider, no matter how good that white label provider might be, they're working with everybody. They're working with the roofer, the dentist, the chiropractor, and everybody in between. And at the end of the day, they're not your, your provider, right? They're, they're, they're providing service to an agency that's then trying to kind of show results for you. When you've got an agency that specializes in your industry, that cares about your results, that is passionate about helping you grow and hit your targets, and they're doing it themselves. They've got a real team, a management staff, and a team that's doing SEO, doing pay-per-click, doing content, doing paid search. They can control that. And there's no way you could expect similar results from someone kind of tossing it over the fence than someone that has a real team that's doing this day in and day out uh, on your behalf. So that might be a red flag if we go back to your prior question, right? Yeah. So so that being and and, and and kind of the 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 symptom to that is you ask the 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 company, hey, what's going on with my SEO or what's going on with my local service ads? And they're like, I don't know. Let me check with you. I'm going to get back to you. 
that that's probably a case where they've got a, a white label provider. They probably wouldn't tell you that, but they've got a white label provider. They got to go to them and they don't have immediate access to their team like a, a company that has an internal operation. Um, and I do think that's a red flag and something you want to you know, just be cognizant of. And, and a question that uh, a potential uh, attorney could ask a potential agency going in before they made the commitment, right? You yeah. so, All right. So you have an internal team for this stuff. Yes. Yes, we do. So, so what what early signs might indicate an agency doesn't have the right expertise? So they might be focused on, and and you see this because you have plumbing agencies come and join seven figure agencies. Where the, so to me, it's just chiropractic or dental or or law or so. What what are the early signs that there might be they might not have the expertise? Uh, well, I mean, if if you're not getting a plan, first of all, and it's just kind of like, hey, don't worry, we're going to figure it out. You don't worry, we're we're like the magicians underneath the table. Uh, a true provider that understands what's happening will be able to tell you. Here are the deliverables. Here's what we're going to be working on. Uh, I think that's a red flag. Uh, and then if if there's this weird gap between when you ask a question and when you get an answer, like, you know, if they're doing a two step hop to go and find information, they probably don't have the expertise in house, and they're either just trying to research it. Or they're trying to figure it out for the first time, or they've got someone else that's only passively focused on their accounts that's trying to do that work for them. That makes perfect sense. So beyond claims of legal expertise, what specific questions do law firms ask during the initial vetting process to determine if the agency truly understands their niche and needs? I, I would I would ask some very pointed question about the type of law that you practice. You know, ask, under, make sure that they understand your type of practice, that they understand the type of client that you're trying to attract. Uh, I think that would be the first, just kind of like throw out some questions that would indicate, okay, this person doesn't really understand this this type of law or they do. Um, I would ask for very specific examples of clients that they've worked with. Because again, it's become very popular now to say, hey, I specialize in a vertical, I specialize in legal, or I specialize in a specific industry. Um, but- you want to find out, like, who have you worked with? And I think you want to ask for actual references. Like, can I talk to a couple of these people? Because um, if they're if they're seriously using them as a case study and they can't back that up with a real reference, I think that's that something fishy going on there. Um, so, and then and then the plan, like, you, you know, please tell me, you know, what would your plan be for me in my particular case? Right? right. Show me what you're going to do, and it should be specific enough. That you feel like, okay, I see what's actually going to happen. And it shouldn't be overcomplicated. Like a clear plan, here's the goal, and be able to show you how they're going to reverse engineer the accomplishment of that goal. So to take it just a little bit deeper as part of that vetting process and and, and interviewing process, what, what are the key results or metrics that a law firm should look for and dig into to gauge the success of the agency they're considering? Well, I mean, I would want to know, like, how much are you typically managing in, in budgets for the client? Um, what's your average cost for a lead in my type of industry? What's the average cost for an acquisition or for a new case or for a new client um, in this particular case? Um, and if they don't know those numbers and they can't give you some type of benchmark to what their averages are, um, they either don't track, which is a big, huge red flag, uh, or they don't have enough of a track record in the industry to, to be able to quickly put a finger on those types of numbers. Now, we all know it's going to be different in Los Angeles than it is in Tupelo, but they should have some benchmarks that they can share with you um, along those lines. So, so well so well said, because we see so many, what I call vanity metrics that are meaningless, right? We see them all the time. And so that's a really a great point. So we know there's a lot of charlatans in the digital marketing arena, and that's because the barriers to entry are seemingly very, very low. Right. But I know that to provide a great service with consistent, outstanding results, it's difficult. You know this and I know this from from being there. Why wouldn't a law firm just go hire their own team? Yeah, I think you could only really be best in class in one or two things. Right. And as a law firm, you probably want to be best in class at the type of law that you practice and, and really generating the results for your clients. To be best in class in digital marketing, there's such a level of expertise that has to be developed. Website development, content structuring, SEO, paid search, and all of the tools that go into managing and tracking results. 
um, it would be very, very hard uh, for you as even a large, successful law firm to try and build that type of expertise. Um, and the amount of money you'd have to spend, let's just face it, if you were going to try and build a true world-class digital marketing team, you'd need a digital marketing director, which would probably be one hundred fifty dollars to $200,000 per year. And then you'd need specialists in a team for each of the different things. You need a web development team, a graphics team, a content team. You need an SEO team that's building content, building citations, building your authority. You need a paid search team that specializes in local service ads, Google ads, uh, social media advertising. And to try and build that in-house, unless you're a $100 million law firm, it just wouldn't be financially practical. Now, yes, you could probably hire someone for six figures, but then you'd have to hire an agency underneath that to deliver the results anyways. Uh, and so, you know, you could only be world-class at so many different things. Um, I really think you're, you're better served to say, who's the best of the best? Make sure you do your due diligence on the front end and hire a team that can take this part of it and run with it on your behalf. And the other point to that is, where do you find these people? Where do you find the the the, the, the guy or gal who is the expert in PPC? Right. Or, or, or that really is up to really, really understands how SEO works. Right. Not easy. So, right. And yeah. not easy. And they're either running their own agency or they work for a great agency. Uh, and it's, it's not as easy as, Hey, I want to hire someone that can run great pay-per-click for my law firm. Right. right. There, there's right. lots of work that even us as agencies that do this full time, you know, we have full time recruiting processes in our, in our agencies just to find these people and to get them in our organizations. That's right. Now, to the other end, but to, let's talk about the 800-pound gorillas that are out there. You know who they are. We, oh, yeah. we both have the same competition. What are the what are the pitfalls about uh, uh, for f to choose one of those? And there's only a few of them. So yep. what would what would a pitfall be I for? Think, a I think the biggest pitfall going with the 800-pound gorilla organizations um, usually is they've become so large that the the people that were involved in the day-to-day -day running of the accounts that had the, the strategy lines um, have kind of moved up the organization. And usually what you're dealing with, just like when you call AT&T today, the 800 pound gorilla in, in mobile, you're going to get, you know, a VA that is following a script that has a very structured, you know, point of questions that they answer. And usually you're frustrated. You're like, man, I need results. I need someone that knows how to get this thing solved for me. At, and you don't get the, the, the accountability that you would in a small organization that specializes in your type of business. I think the other thing is these large organizations uh, grew typically through acquisitions. They grew through venture capital and they've got benchmarks and revenue numbers that they're trying to hit. They've got large executive offices. They've got lots of layers of management. Uh, and so the amount of money that you spend with them that actually goes to your service delivery is diminished to, to practically nothing. So the um, the attention to detail, the the actual expertise that you have on the front line with these massive corporations is is a completely different ball game. I, I think the other thing is large organizations with as mu uh, as much corporate structure as there is, any small decision that they need to make down the lines have to go through multiple meetings, lots of red tape, and so with the internet marketing game changing as quickly as it is, local service ads. Google ads, the algorithm constantly changing, Facebook, TikTok, these organizations, they might have big dollars invested in being in, in on the cutting edge, but before they can actually make a change that's impacted to your account, it's going to take multiple layers of decision versus a nimble, you know, agency that specializes in your industry, you know, they're on the cutting edge. They're paying attention to this stuff and they can make changes and turn on a dime and they can be much more competitively on the front end um, than these larger organizations might be. I agree a hundred percent and so spot on. So one more thing that we run into is that we see law firms. I'm sure you see it with plumbers. They don't, they, they hire multiple vendors. So they've got one, one company doing one agency doing an SEO and another one doing PPC. Somebody else built the website. And this is a person over here. Somebody's, daughter graduated college and is doing the social media. So what, what's the value of having a complete solution versus multiple vendors? Well, I think, you know, above and beyond the obvious that it's nice to go to one, one organization and have them accountable for the whole thing. I think bigger than that is that 
to truly be effective with your online marketing, um, there's a synergistic play, right? Your website, the way the messaging is on your website, the local service ads, the Google ads, the Facebook strategy, the way you communicate with your clients via email and other communication mechanisms, really, they should all be cohesive, right? If there's not consistency with the website strategy and the page strategy and even the, like what's being posted on social media, there's going to be a disconnect, which is going to lower the effectiveness of your online marketing. And so that's why I think you want to find an agency that specializes in your industry and goes multi-channel that's saying, hey, look, here's where your practice is today. Here's what your goal is over the next year, over the next five years. And here's the plan. And they're looking at the entire online marketing spectrum and they're managing that for you at the highest level possible. I think impossible to expect even close to that outcome if you've got one person doing your social and someone else doing some random SEO thing and someone else doing some video stuff for you. You want it all to be interconnected so that you can get the synergized results that you're after. So shifting gears just a little bit, um, recently, obviously, we, we've seen this explosion of TikTok, right? And the proliferation of short form reels. Um, so what trends in video can we expect for 2024 and beyond? Well, I mean, the, the video game's constantly changing. Uh, we know that the, the most consumed content on the internet is video. There's a massive shift from long-form video, like you'd find on YouTube, where you sit and you watch for an hour. Uh, today's consumer, even the aging consumer, prefers to watch short-form video, a minute to three-minute bite-sized content. Um, and I, I think you know there's going to be more and more action with Instagram, with TikTok, with uh, reels with short form content. Yeah. Now I think you want to infuse that with long form content at the same time. But if you're not creating short form content to position yourself as the go-to attorney in your market, to build that no like trust factor so that when somebody thinks of your type of law, they think of you in your marketplace, uh, you're going to be missing out on a massive opportunity going to 2024, 2025 and beyond. So it's all, in my opinion, moving so much of it's moving in that direction. And it also has a positive impact on the SEO when it's done right, when it's optimized properly. Absolutely. So, so, so from your experience, can you prioritize the top five most important things every law firm should have for a successful internet marketing plan? Yeah, it's a great question. I think, first of all, there should be a plan, right? That, I think foremost, there should be like, here's the strategy based on where you're at and where you're looking to go. We want to make sure there's a clear plan and it's not just, hey, let's throw some money at this and hope that we get the growth, hope that we get the case flow. Um, number two is we've got to drive leads, right? We need to make sure we've got a mechanism to drive leads. My favorite channels for that are organic. We want to make sure we're coming up in the non-paid results on Google, on Bing, and whatever search engine might come down the pipe in the future on the map. Um, so when someone's looking for your type of service, whatever the type of case law you serve in your market, you're coming up organically. We still find the best quality traffic, the lowest cost per lead comes from organic. Number two is we have to have paid strategies. Like you can't just rest on your laurels with organic. We want to be playing the LSA game, Google local service ads. We want to be doing Google ads. And we also want to be doing some type of retargeting, right? So that if somebody gets to your website, regardless of whether it was from one of your billboards or from one of your Google ads or from local service, when they get to your website, now they're going to be seeing you again and again across the web. So that's your, your paid strategy. That's what you want to make sure you're doing there. Um, and then number two is we have to make sure that we're maximizing conversion, right? We got to make sure that when somebody comes into your world, if we're not converting them into a lead, converting them into a, a potential case, we're not going to get the outcome we're after. And so there's a couple things you want to do to improve your, your conversion. That's your website needs to be built to convert, right? And, and Law Firm Marketing Pros does this all of this stuff so well. Number two is you have to make sure you've got a great reputation, right? Before somebody can convert, they're going to look at you. They're going to look at your reviews. You have to have lots of positive reviews on Google and the other places where they look. Um, and then number three is you want to be doing some type of marketing automation, right? I think the attorneys that are going to win in 2024 and beyond have automation in place. So when, a, when a, an inquiry comes in, they're following up via email, via SMS, and they're they're winning the speed to lead race. Um, and so we want to drive leads. We want to maximize conversion. 
And then we have to also optimize our return on investment. And I, I, I again, law firm marketing pros, I'm glad to be sharing this because I think you guys do this best of, best of the best. Um, number one is you have to know how much to spend, right? If you're going to maximize your, your, your outcomes and your return on investment, you have to be spending enough, right? If the goal is to go from being a $1 million practice to a $3 million practice, oftentimes we're looking at the percentages, we've got to spend a little bit more. So we got a little bit more money to invest in the marketing. So we got to know what the appropriate spend is. We know what our average cost per lead and average cost per case is so that we've got those metrics. And as that spend increases, we know that makes financial sense for us. We're getting a return on investment. Uh, and then we want reporting that shows us how much do we spend, how many leads, how many cases, and most importantly, what's the return on investment down to the channel? Are we getting a great ROI from local service ads right now? Or is it from Google ads? Or is it from the organic stuff we're doing so that we can make sure we allocate the funds to the area that are going to generate the best results? And so on a model, that's a little bit easier to wrap your head around, but we've got to drive leads, maximize conversion, and then we've got to optimize the results by having all of that data so we can make intelligent decisions. And with the only exception to that, in my in my opinion, from doing this for almost 14 years now, is branding. It's difficult to get the attribution on branding. And, yeah. and more and more of my, my clients, because we're getting more and more larger clients, invest a lot of money in branding. And mm -hmm. both online and off. Absolutely. Um, okay, so... Last question for this segment. How has the rapidly evolving technological landscape impacted the digital marketing industry? And what do you anticipate the roles for the coming years? The role for the coming years? Yeah, is it, I mean, it's constantly changing. I think most recently AI is the big deal with ChatGPT and BART and all these technologies. I think um, the agencies that embrace AI, that understand how to leverage it as a tool, but not as the thing, are going to be on the cutting edge because they'll be able to produce better, quicker, more effective content uh, than somebody that's just trying to do everything manually. Um, the other big things happening with with technology, like you mentioned, with TikTok and short-term video is huge. And making sure that you're not just using text. Today's consumer prefers to watch video. They prefer to engage in short-form video. And that will build your brand. It will improve your conversion rates. It will improve your SEO because of the time on the page. Understanding how video plays into your overall strategy is huge. Uh, the changes in the algorithm, new things like local service ads, which has been new in the last couple of years, that's going to continue to change. And so agencies have to be on the cutting edge with what's changing with Google, what's happening with social media, what are the new advertising platforms that are coming online that you can tap into, um, and just making sure that you're a student of the game. Um, and that you're understanding how things are shifting so that you can be ahead of those changes to generate even better outcomes for the clients. So, and that's really a message for the law firms and the attorneys listening to have an agency that, that, that that's on the cutting edge, right. like law firm marketing pros. Exactly. So, so we're going to move on to the lightning round. And this is where you get to know, like, and trust Josh Nelson. And we learn a little bit more about him. I'm just going to fire off some questions and you just... Rapid fire answer. That's why we call it the lightning round. So um, what never fails to make you laugh? Uh, never fails to make me, uh, uh, make me laugh. I love watching comedians. Uh, I'm a big fan of uh, Sebastian Maniscalco. I, I was watching his specials on Netflix and that always makes me laugh. That's that's for sure. He's a good one for sure. So best compliment you ever got? Uh, best compliment I ever got was, you know, you have a special way of making complicated things seem simple. Um, I think that's that's a, a big compliment, something I strive for because, you know, I don't want to be too academic. Right? I just want to be like, here's here's how this actually works in the real world, how you can leverage it. That's so true about you. Absolutely. I love it. So uh, person you trade places with for a day. I didn't think about this one for a little bit. Um, I was, I mean, if I had to trade with someone, might as well be Elon Musk, right? We're just man of the world right now on the cutting edge of everything with AI, with Tesla, with everything else. That wouldn't be a bad person to trade places with for a day. I wouldn't want to trade in perpetuity. That's that's, that's the same choice I have, right? Yeah. So, good stuff. Yeah. Maybe we could uh, jump on SpaceX, right? Exactly. <laughs> right. Guilty pleasure. Guilty pleasure. Um, I love chips and salsa with a nice uh, movie on Netflix. I know I shouldn't do it, but every now and then I'll indulge in some chips and salsa. 
Love it. Okay. So biggest risk you've ever taken? I said the biggest risk I took was starting our, our agency, Plumbing and HVAC SEO. Uh, at the time, I had, had a failed business and, um, you know, starting a business never guaranteed. So right. it was a pretty big risk and it paid off with dividends. For, for all of us and all the law firm owners, all the attorneys that own law firms out there, right? So um, worst, pe worst piece of advice you ever got? Worst piece of advice was uh, when I was thinking about starting the agency, um, a family member said, you know what? You've got a good job. You're making a decent income. You know, you've got a nice steady thing going. Don't be an idiot. Don't try and start another business. You've already tried that before. It's not, it's not for you. Uh, really bad <laughs> advice. And really glad I didn't, uh, I didn't uh, stick with not that. for you. Okay. And look <laughs> at me now, right? <laughs> so uh, what do you wish you were better at dealing with? Um, better. I, I wish I was better at dealing with uh, losing clients. You know, you know, in agencies, you lose clients from time to time. It's a super painful process. Um, I think I was. I wish I was better at, you know, not taking it personal. But that's because you care, right? Right. As I as I say, it's like a punch in the gut every time, right? Yeah. So, uh, what is the one thing that you would like to change about yourselves? One thing I'd like to change, I wish I could be more disciplined with my diet and I'm always looking to get fitter, healthier, um, and I'll, I'll be like really good at stretches and I'll be really bad at stretches. I wish I could just be a little bit more consistent. Back to that guilty pleasure. Yeah. Chips is also <laughs> last night. There you go. There you go. Right. Uh, what are you most passionate about? I'm most passionate about helping, helping other people accomplish their goals, right? I'm really passionate about what we're doing here at Seven Figure Agency and helping agencies grow and scale. And finally, tell us something that most people don't know about you. Uh, something most people don't know is I, I grew up as a missionary's kid in Haiti. So I actually spent the first nine years of my life in Haiti uh, as a missionary's kid, moved here at about 10 years old to the South Florida area and had been here ever since. But that's a little piece of my history most people don't know. It's quite a culture shock for a 10 year old, huh? Yeah. <laughs> that's great. One last thing is I'd like to get a quote from you uh, about your experience here on the podcast. I mean, it, being on the podcast has been a lot of fun. Josh and his team do a great job crafting questions that make it super interactive. Uh, Josh is a great host. And so he asks great questions, makes it very easy and very comfortable. I uh, highly recommend if you get the opportunity to be on the podcast to, to seize the opportunity. Great. So that wraps us up for today. Josh Nelson, thank you so much. This has been tremendous. I, th I think this is going to be very helpful for a lot of the attorneys and law firms out there looking to hire a new agency. So really appreciate your time today. Thanks so much. Josh Konigsberg, Law Firm Marketing Pro, signing off for now. Thanks for listening to another fabulous episode of Behind the Bench. I hope you take action on some insight and tips you learned today. If you like what you heard, please like, subscribe, and share.